Hi guys, welcome back to another 1.19 Skyblock episode. So I'm ready now to leave the Witch Farm Island. I actually have to. I brought 20 stacks of logs with me and we're basically down to a couple planks left and some stairs and slabs. So we actually have to leave now. And I filled my inventory with what I think are the most useful items for the first progression. Obviously glowstone and redstone. I could also yeah, compact it down into blocks. And I thought maybe the glass bottles could be helpful in case we maybe get an, a birch sapling from the wandering trader. Then we could already start making a honey farm, for example. So also I yeah, took my cauldrons with me and the two water bottles we got. Right, time to head back. It's gonna be like 6,000 blocks of walking until we finally arrive back at the starter area. Finally back home. There in the background we can see the witch hut. Took me almost 20 minutes to sprint the whole distance. So if we could get a saddle from fishing right now, it would be maybe nice so we can you know, travel a bit quicker with the horse. Right, um, yeah, next step is actually now getting that water source. I prepared everything, got three water bottles ready, the cauldron and one water bucket. Okay, so let's fill the cauldron. There we go, then we can take the water out. And we made an advancement. Nice. Let's check it out. Skyblock. Here, get a water bucket from a full cauldron. Okay, um, what's next? Fish or cocoa beans in a jungle? Ah, okay, that's a custom feature. We also need to do fishing in a jungle anyway to get bamboo. Then kill a drown for copper. Convert garden to an elder garden with lightning. Kill it for a sponge. Okay, that's also the modded feature. And that's also another one. Erode that coral into sand by letting water flow out of it. That's the way to renewable sand. I'm really interested in that right now. But let's actually get the second water source. I guess I can just water lock this one here. And then we use the water bottles again. Fill this back up. Then we can use the bucket. And now we should have an infinite water source if we have two buckets of water. Yeah, if you bring it somewhere else, that would be the way to go. And suddenly there's actually so much we can do now with the water source. So we really need to decide what we're gonna do first. So we can yeah, do some fishing, try to get a saddle or other interesting items. Then we could yeah, drown a zombie to get a drowned mob and try to get a copper for the lightning rod. Um, we could also maybe place some water in a river biome to get drowns to spawn directly with tridents. It would be quite cool. Uh, we could make a better mob farm in general. It uses flushing now instead of Pathfinding, although our redstone abilities the options also still limited to no pistons, but at least trapdoors or, and redstone dust that already allows us to do a lot of things. Then we could go to an ocean monument, get some elder guardians to spawn or normal guardians first. Um, we could also make an ice farm, although we need silk touch for that reasonably. And what I'm actually most interested in is this feature from the mod pack that allows us to get sand. So you rode a dead coral into sand by letting water flow out of it. I'm not entirely sure how this works, so I didn't check it out in creative. But the way to this would be to go to a warm ocean biome, uh, make a little platform, flood it, and then we can just bow meal this platform that would generate some seagrass and some corals. We need to turn it into a dead coral and then somehow we can get sand from this. So we can maybe use the sandstone for building instead of having to chop down trees all the time. It would be quite interesting. Um, probably not the thing we, we need to do first in order to progress the fastest, but I'm just really interested in that. I already checked. There is a warm ocean biome like 1000 blocks away from the starter island. So I guess I'm gonna chop down some more trees. I'm also gonna try to get a second bucket. So we could make an infinite water source Everywhere we bring uh, the cauldron and three water bottles each time, but it would be, I guess, nicer to just bring two water buckets. So I already chopped four stacks of logs and I was getting the ingots for the second bucket. And that's just something that really excited me. There's actually an enchanted iron shovel. Let's see what we got. And it is efficiency too. Ah, could it be so like touch? All right. Finally got the required three iron ingots. So we can make the other bucket. Technically, you should probably also get five more ingots to make another hopper in case we actually uh, manage to make a good sand farm. We could use that. Mm. But it's actually so tedious. I'm actually up to 4,000 zombies killed already. And it just uh, takes forever. 
Oh, by the way, somebody recently actually pointed out that I have a high distance flown value. But I immediately thought I was using creative mode to fly around. But no, it's actually if you just jump around a little bit, distance in the air counts as flown. But the statistics upset every 30 seconds, I think. If we wait a little bit, it was at 319, now it's at 322. So distance flown doesn't mean I'm cheating. Alright, so let's take the other bucket of water so we can make an infinite source. It's a new location. And we need to go 450 blocks towards that direction and then do a left turn for another 700 blocks. Alright, so where should we start? I guess, yeah, I'm gonna start bridging out here. So it's only roughly 1200 blocks. It's not nearly as bad as the 1200 I had to do the other day. I actually just realized I was bridging towards the wrong direction because I flipped the coordinates. So I have to go to minus 300, minus 700. So I bridged like 100 blocks too much. Yeah, at minus 300 I have to do a left turn. I arrived at our destination, so here we have the warm ocean biome. Okay, I think I'm just gonna jump up a couple blocks and then make a platform here. Um, I was thinking like 5 by 5 we can quickly flood. Should be large enough. Oh, gotta be careful not fall in the void there. Okay. Still have the overlay with the light levels from Mini Hut. That's why we have we had the zeros there. Um, yeah, just have a couple blocks around. There we go. Let's check. Yeah, this is all warm ocean biome. Okay, so we will get the coral blocks generating. Not the blocks, the, the normal, the smaller ones. The big coral blocks, I think we can only get from the morning trader. Okay, yeah, this definitely has the right water color. Okay, then about bone blocks. We definitely have enough bone meal. And then I would say just this okay i'm actually after the coral here now it's said we need that coral and we have and have water flowing out to the side um i can't really mine the corals because that requires silk touch which you don't have so i guess we're just gonna encase it then i bucket the water out we should have a dead coral and then I guess I'm just gonna water lock it again. Now we need water flowing out of it. Um, what if I uh, break a block there? Then we have we have flowing water. Okay, Let's see. I'm not entirely sure. So if, oh yeah, okay. So I was thinking. Yeah, I heard we, we're gonna get items and not blocks from this. I didn't expect it to be this quick. I thought this would be like a super slow process, but we're almost getting an item every two, three seconds. We already have half a stack. But there is one downside to this. Um, at some point, the dead coral will disappear. So according to those mod features, there we go. There's a 3% chance that um, the coral will disappear. So we would need to replace it somehow. Right. Is it actually like a 3% chance? Or just does it always happen after 34 cent? You would like add this up, this would be 102%. Um, so I'm not entirely sure if it's actually random or if it would just yeah, be used up after a certain amount of time. Okay, let's try it with the next one. Oh, gotta wait until it dies. I've also heard that there's a, yeah, that you can get two colors of sand. So right now we're only getting the yellow one. If you would get a fire coral, the red one, then we could get red sand as well. Let's try that out. Coral fan. Oh, I can't be that hard to get a red one, come on. I think it's actually random what color you get. Not sure if there's any preferences. It's not like, is it like a flower pattern, like in a flower forest. There's a red one, finally, okay. And I guess let's break that stuff around. Oh. Can't you no longer put a water source in a water source? Oh, you can. Okay. 
That's still producing. Okay, let's see if we get the red sand. There we go. Not sure if there's any point of having red sand besides being a different kind of building block. But it's definitely yeah, interesting to know. In case you want to later make a farm, we maybe could actually sort the color somehow. Or we would always get like 20% red sand. That will also be interesting. Okay, now I'm just curious if we're gonna get like 34 cent exactly again. Because this could be interesting later if you want to automate this. Because then we just can clock it. Okay, 66. 67. And... 68. No, it's apparently random. Okay, so right now we can't do much really to automate this. Um, yeah, but later, of course, there's a couple of ways... So, as far as I know, coral fans are movable. But, yeah, it's gonna be quite tricky, actually. Now that I think about it. So, you probably need to use dispensers for sure to, yeah, remove the water and then dispense it again. Then we need a dispenser for bone milling to get new corals. Um, so, right now, yeah, we don't have a lot of options, so I can't pick up any corals or do anything with it. I can just do it manually like this, and I don't think... The long run it's gonna to be too convenient so got like 80 sand blocks if you convert it into sandstone yeah, it's like okay the coral disappeared already again uh, there's like 20 blocks like 40 slabs i got from this um it's quite nice but i feel like if i have to bucket all the time it's not worth it compared to just chopping wood that's also quite interesting so it does work for coral fan as well so this Probably gonna make it a bit easier to automate later if you can use both corals and coral fans. I'm trying some manual farming right now, so I got a couple of cells, one water source, so I just bone mill that, hope for coral to generate, then I take out the water, and in the meantime we can go to the next one. There we go. And then this should be dead at some point, and I can go to the next cell. Okay, now this one is dead, I can water it again. Yeah, it's decently fast, but considering we always get half a stack of sand out of this, which is like 8 sandstone blocks, or so 16 slabs. Um, not sure how well this actually compares to yeah the locks. One lock is 8 slabs as well. Hmm. I feel like this is actually a bit more effort right now. I just hurried, trying to get as many corals at the same time as possible. You can see almost all the cells are filled. Okay, I'm not really getting a decent amount of sand. I just noticed something. There's actually a guaranteed way to get a coral fan. So instead of aiming and bone milling at the bottom plank, if you bone mill the side of the plank here, you'll always get a coral fan. Look at that. Is this vanilla? I had no idea. I wonder, of course, if a dispenser can also do that later. But for now, this is super convenient. We only had more buckets. I feel like I got really good at manually farming sand, so I got a whole chest and then some of the yellow sand and about 16 stacks of the red sand. Right, I'd almost say this feature is a little bit overpowered. Um, what buzzes me a little bit about it is that it feels a bit fast. Like, that coral produces a sand item every 2-3 to three seconds and that's realistic, maybe the wrong word, but um, it feels just too fast. Like, for example, it takes like 10 minutes or a little bit longer to fill a cauldron with lava if you have it at pointed dripstone. Um, I think that might be a better way to balance this. So I'd say like if this would take on average like 10 minutes or even half an hour to get an item, I think it would be a little bit better. 
Um, but yeah, I'll definitely take it. It's the feature how it was implemented in Skyblock. I think it would also maybe be fun if you would get sand blocks instead of sand items directly. Then you would need to either break the sand block or you pull a block and it drops down on a slab that then breaks. So one extra step required. I think it would be a bit more fun. Yeah, renewable sand is definitely something this, the game desperately needs. So right now, in a normal survival world, we usually use end portal duping of gravity blocks, which of course is a little bit cheaty, not intended, it all relies on a bug. Technically, there's also a wandering trader that sells sand, but well, in most cases, it's just not enough if you can buy a stack of sand every hour, or in case of play on a multiplayer server, it's not even guaranteed that you get the wandering trader. Actually, it's not every hour. Of course, you need to get the sand trade, which is also random. So it's like a stack of sand for every 10 hours you play. That's just not enough, really. So there's a couple ways how we implemented renewable sand um, yeah, the last years. For example, on my Patreon server, um, we had, for example, a feature that husks would drop sand. That was quite interesting. Or we had uh, also silverfish trading sand if they enter stone block and then exit again it turns the stone into a sand block that was quite interesting um there's a lot of ways you could imagine how this could be in the actual game sandstorms or sand golems that would create sand layers similar to snow layers might be interesting so there's tons of ways and yeah this is another interesting one so that's something um i haven't heard of that coral is we'll have to see how interesting it actually is later to automate this with dispensers and so on by farming sand with the dead coral mechanic, we also unlocked more advancements. There's a new part of the advancement tree. We got the uh, erode dead coral here, and next we would need to get heart of a dolphin. Gift a dolphin, maybe they'll return the favor. So I read up about this already. Uh, in case you gift a dolphin a fish, you would start digging at the ocean floor and try to dig out a heart of the sea. Um, not entirely sure if you need special blocks for that or if any block in an ocean biome that is at the bottom of water is enough. Um, so that's quite interesting because this would actually give us access to a conduit. We could get the nautilus shells from fishing or killing drowned mobs, then craft a conduit and combine it with the prismarine blocks and get a haste one effect this way. So in case we stand in water for a short moment, we can, I think, get something like 16 or 30 seconds of haste one which could maybe be interesting for chopping wood right now so that's something we need to uh, keep in mind but in the other end i was thinking so in case we need to get prismarine blocks for a guardian farm this would actually be the best um block farm at the moment anyway you would get all of those prismarine shards you would even yeah get the ingredients for sea lanterns some another light source block Maybe that's something we should actually do next. Uh, make some kind of guardian farm to get prismarine. Yeah, it seems actually like the best way to get building blocks right now. So we're back home. I brought some sandstone and sand blocks with me. Now I actually want to make another bucket in case we farm sand again, then additional buckets would definitely be helpful. Also want to get those shears because I'm pretty sure we can only mine that bush shears. Okay, I got eight saplings. Let's put them on there. I guess this will also be based on random ticks. Eventually those will turn into dead bushes. Alright, then one thing I actually want to do finally, haven't done it yet, just make a chest where I put in swords. I was always running back, crafting new ones, but I think it's actually time. <laughs> We're mining so much iron here that I just make a full chest of wooden swords. So some people actually always suggested that I should get, for example, an iron axe to farm the logs quicker or things like that. It's actually super tedious to get iron. So the zombies only have like a 0.8% chance to drop an iron ingot. So I need to kill like 125 zombies to get one iron ingot. Uh, and like zombies only like 30% of all the mobs. So like killing 400 mobs on average, get an iron ingot. It's super tedious. I should probably also make a faster mob farm or dedicated zombie farm even soon all right now i uh, should have brought actually some sticks I can also craft them okay there we go thanks and let's finally craft enough swords you can just put in here oh that was quick he was just about to drop off some stuff so we have more inventory space for picking up mob drops and we already have a dead bush 
Okay, um, I guess. What do we actually have to do again? Kill a sapling by placing it on sand. I guess it uh, <laughs> expects us to mine it as well. And it drops a stick. So I'm pretty sure we have to get those shears to get the achievement. We're definitely down a couple swords now, but I got six iron ingots finally. So I can craft some shears. And I wanted one more bucket. Alright, let's try out the shears. See if we can get that achievement. Actually, I had to put slabs on top because mobs uh, all of a sudden spawned there. All of a sudden I had the poison effect because a witch attacked me. Okay, let's see. There we go. Herbicidal maniac. Let's unlock more. No, okay, this is a dead end. What I want to do now is, is to get some copper. I'm actually a little bit afraid that this mob farm could burn down if there's a thunderstorm at some point. So I want to dig in there really quick. Place a couple of slabs. So the mobs wouldn't drop on top of me. Of course there's a bed. Okay. And then I want to place some water sources here at head height of the zombies. I think it would be like one and a half blocks higher. I think this should count as head height. Uh, the zombies need to be in... Yeah, or the head needs to be in a water source to convert into drowned mobs. Alright, um, let's place down... Oh. Of course we would water lock stairs behind. And it's probably gonna require a little bit more effort. Do we have planks? Yes. So I can probably... Take out the signs again real quick. Place the planks, then place water on top. Uh, oh, getting flushed out. <gasps> What's happening? Why can I not fight the current? Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> not sure. I didn't know the water is that strong. Okay, one more. Yeah, I brought a second bucket. I just want there to be sources. Now we can close it again. It's got a bit more exciting <laughs> than I was hoping for. Okay, now we can break the planks again. And then we will waterlock this. No, this flowing water. We can just place the signs. Yep. There we go. Now, zombies drop. Down here should get converted to drowned mobs. Um, let's actually take out some of the mobs here. It's kind of convenient, it had multiple cells. Now the mob cap got filled by those guys. Okay, did I forget to break the slabs above? Oh yeah. Mm, it's gonna be exciting if you get a creeper or not. Quick. Skeletons doesn't much better. Ah, uh, one more. One more slap in there. <laughs> oh boy. Oh no, they also don't take any fall damage anymore. Mmm. That's not gonna make it easier. Mmm. What to do? Maybe I'll wait until we get enough mobs in the other chambers again, so this side would be pretty clear. At least the system works. So you can see the zombie here is shaking. He might even have a drowned mob already. Yeah, you can see him in the back. But could... Oh no, they're floating up. That's not good. Probably kill them before they can escape. Okay, so this definitely is not the most efficient copper farm, but all I want really is just a couple copper ingots to make a lightning rod, just to yeah, secure this place a little bit. And then of course we need it later anyway, um, when we want to convert those pigs into zombified piglins to get the gold for the golden apple. Oh, this is scary. It's a bit too scary. Oh my god. Let's see if we can get in there. There's too many creepers. Oh no. <gasps> a copper ingot. <laughs> okay, we got the first one. So we only need two more. I'm pretty sure afterwards we can just take out the water from below and then we have a normal mob farm again. 
only could get rid of those creepers. Okay, so I just pill it up to get rid of that last slap in. <gasps> oh my god. Um, let's see. Okay, you got rid of the last slap. Okay, there's one zombie being converted. They always float up. Okay. Um, so the plan is not just fight the other mobs, so this chamber would fill up a bit more. All in it really is three copper ingots. Oh, what's going on there? Oh, I think the skeletons can see me through the, the slabs there and they start shooting at the creepers. Um, that wasn't the smartest way to deal with this, I feel like. We could just close it again. Probably for the best. Okay, now we got full blocks. It shouldn't matter. Usually I only place the stairs so the mobs can pathfind, but they can only like track seven blocks down, so here you can just have full blocks as well. Alright, I guess we have some drowned in there. It's hard to keep track of it. Because they wear the same kind of pants, it's really hard to see. Glass blocks would be nice. We have sand now, but the furnace is still quite a way away. Villagers did sell glass would be, I guess, the, the first thing you could do to get sand. Ah, oh, there we go. Third copper ingot. Okay, time to take the water out. We have to quickly take our two water sources, otherwise it's just gonna regenerate. This might have worked. Yep, looks like it. Okay, um, I guess we can just place it in here. Empty the bucket. And it should be back to normal. Yep, alright. We actually got five copper ingots. Then we can craft... Oh, getting hit there. Then we can craft the lightning rod. Nice. And we also got an advancement again. Oh, this un also unlocked more advancements. So what is this here? Strike some pigs with lightning. Convert to some of our piglins. Yep. And energize some vines into glow lichen. I read about this before. So the way to energize vines is to place them on the side of a glowstone block. And if they're getting hit by a lightning strike, then they will be turned into glow lichen. But of course we need to get vines first. The road to that would be to get some jungle saplings, grow them into a 2 by 2 tree, and then on the side of that, usually some vines also generate. Okay, one last thing, craft a golden apple. And last is actually one more thing to do. Now that we have three buckets, I wanted to craft a cake. So I'm getting some milk from the cows here. All right. Yeah, we got more cows spawning there. Hey, what? Is this a donkey? You're not supposed to spawn in a savannah, what? What's a savannah biome? Did I read this wrong on the wiki? I thought llamas and horses can only spawn here. I quickly check. I was reading the wrong column, so in Bedrock Edition you can only get horses and llamas from a savannah. Uh, it's actually donkeys and horses in Java Edition. Of course it has to be different. So much for feature parody. Yeah, I'll take it. Donkey is definitely super good. Um, because we can settle it. A little bit of breeding, we can also get a faster donkey. Not even sure how fast the horse or the donkey is right now. But need to check that. Um, yeah, I'm also gonna tie the donkey to the fence. Because I don't trust those animals to not p push each other off there. Alright, I think I have one lead left over from the, the slime we killed earlier. So there we go. Of course, we could also breed a mule, so if the horse is really fast, maybe we can also breed with the donkey, maybe get something in between. That's also something we can do immediately, uh, so we don't have to breed a lot of donkeys, because right now breeding donkeys or horses would be super expensive, because it requires either golden carrots or golden apples. Yeah, I can't really afford that right now. I'd say we can maybe breed them once we get to the nether. We can have a, a zombie fight picking for, or once we get you know, portals, but it's basically getting to the nether. Alright, then one last thing to do. 
Let's craft it, cake. A lot of progress today. Deserve this. <laughs> okay. Need it. Except for the slice. <laughs> Alright, so that's it for today. So plan for the next episode. I'm definitely gonna look into uh, building a garden farm for building materials. Then we can do some fishing. Uh, and I was also thinking a better mob farm, a specialized um, yeah, copper farm or iron farm, just based on the zombie reinforcements would be super sweet. All right, thanks guys for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.